Okay, welcome back. Earlier today I did uh, some games on my Genesis Mini, like Road Rash 2 and Alex Kidd in Enchanted Castle. And they were positively terrible, so I decided, why not treat myself? So, some good news. Um, at a point right now where things are very comfortable, and I've been able to play a lot more games in my spare time. Yeah, the last couple years I've been so busy with kids in school and work and all that now and co competing. But now I've finally been able to play some more games and one of them like I went ahead and I played like some games on my Super Nintendo that aren't on the mini like Donkey Kong Country 2, you know, games that I'd been wanting to get around to for a long time. So, Donkey Kong Country 2, Pitfall the Mayan Adventure, Illusion of Gaia, Sunset Riders. I haven't beaten any of these games, but I've been able to play th quite a bit of them, and I've really enjoyed them. I've also been dabbling with some of the games on the classic... SNES Mini and the NES Mini. I realize I've already played Super Castlevania 4, most of it, on this channel, but I don't remember that playthrough coming out very good, and the audio was weak too, so this is going to be a more fun run, and it's going to be an opportunity just for me to chat and catch up. Because lately I've been on, you know, despite all those other games, I've been really on a Castlevania and Contra kick. I've been playing some of Contra 3 The Alien Wars, Super C, you know, games I admittedly am not that good at. Uh, I got a look at Contra 4 on the DS, that have been, that one looks great and I'd love to play it at some point. Um, I've also been playing uh, Castlevania, I played some Symphony of the Night, and Super Castlevania 4. So I thought I'd treat myself, and um, Hopefully we get better at Contra and Super C and Contra, th Contra 3 The Alien Wars good enough to upload some footage. Because right now, watching me play those games, I'm, it's pretty brutal. Uh, even um, playing some Castlevania Bloodlines on the Genesis, enjoying that one. And I remember when I was watching, Mike, I've also been watching some of Mike Matei's old streams. And when he was doing... Super Castlevania 4, he said that this one probably the easiest of the Castlevania games, and I tend to agree. I've played, I've only played uh, some of them, you know, the older ones, Castlevania 1, 2, and 3 and Super Castlevania 4 and Symphony of the Night. Uh, also, I've played some of uh, Castlevania 64, but I tend to agree, this one is the easiest out of all those. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started and we're just going to play until we get a game over. We're going to try and have as strong of a run as possible through the first, I don't know, half of the game or whatever. And it's impossible to talk about this game without mentioning AVGN. James has said that uh, this is his favorite of the Castlevania games. He's also said that this is... This was uh, a bit of a Halloween tradition for him. He would play this game... For several years, we played this game every year around uh, on Halloween. I thought that was kind of a cool tradition, a bit of a long one because this this game does take some time to beat. Now, when Mike Matei did this game on his stream, he said that because James has mentioned that he really enjoys the eight-directional whip, whereas Mike Matei has said that the eight-directional whip kind of takes away from 
the importance of the sub-weapons. I tend to agree with that. I will say that the cross sub-weapon might be the exception. That one... And probably the pocket watch, too. But when you have the crucifix with the triple shot, it is really, really fun. So we're gonna... Now that we've got the crucifix, we're going to try and get the triple shot. And we are going to try to hang on to that item for as long as possible. We're also going to do our best to rack up points. Points not completely meaningless in this game. You do get extra lives. And I admit, uh, I am a bit of a glutton for... I know that points basically meaningless in these types of games, but I always kind of liked the idea of keeping track of your score. And you do have to be careful about not just blindly going underneath a candle. That's how you lose your sub-weapon. And of course, part of that is just memorizing where the sub-weapons are. Okay, we got the double shot. The last time I played this game, a few weeks ago. I got to the Dracula fight, and... If you know the... I think everyone knows it, but the... trick in the uh, area right before Dracula, where you get all the hearts and the uh, crucifix with triple shot so invaluable because it makes that fight with you can get really good at fighting him straight up with the whip but if you have the crucifix with the triple shot it makes that Dracula fight so much easier and actually a lot of fun you just spam the um, triple shot crucifix at his head height all over the screen and it makes the fight so simple. You know, you have 99 hearts, there's no need to be sparing with them.
The boss battle is so much more fun when you have crucifixes that you can throw. And I think I missed one of the, uh, I think I missed the triple shot. It must have been hidden in one of the walls. Now we have the triple shot. Now we're Now we're really playing. That is the pocket watch or holy water, so we're going to not whip that candle. Risky jump there, don't want to lose the triple shot and get the crummy dagger. I 
I tend to agree with Mike Matei. The axe, not really that useful in this game because you can whip upward diagonally. Classic 16-bit trick, if there's something in the foreground. There, there was an extra life hidden up there. I remember in um, King of Dragons, a Capcom beat him up. They hid their continues behind foreground objects. You, had, you really had to search for them to know where to look for them. That's a game I really wish I could play on this channel, but it's not on the Classic Mini. And I don't have a HDMI modded SNES, so until that happens... Okay, stage three. Here's probably where I'm going to lose my first life. I always lose a life somewhere around here. And it's a shame, because I'm really enjoying having the triple shot. There's an axe, so we're going to avoid that. I'm a glutton for getting points. The points not completely meaningless in this game. They do determine, they do award you extra lives at certain point thresholds. But I've mentioned this before. As I get older, I find myself, you know, as I when I was a kid, I never cared about what the score was. That wasn't the point of a game. It was to beat it and maybe like find all the secrets. But nowadays, I find I do care about the points. It's it's a numerical way of marking your progress. All right, let's try not to lose a life here. This part not too bad.
plenty of hearts, no need to be shy about using them. Up there is a dagger, so we are not going to get it. There's a pocket watch, so we're going to avoid that too. Okay, here's probably where I'm going to lose a life. I'm going to try hard not to. Sure, that's a dagger. I thought there was a less dangerous route. I thought you could take the top route, but that is uh, not possible. Lost the life on that part. So cheap. Just couldn't get out of that box. Now we're stuck with the axe. Thank you. 
Yeah, same thing. Basically tanking my run right here because that lame section with the birds. Try not to let those birds get the best of us again. Ah, uh, that's food, isn't it? Okay, the food's up here. That was just money. Not impressed with my stage three performance. Stage four, quite a bit easier. that to go away. Oh, my God. 
Last time I played this level, I had the mistake. I dangled the whip all the way down into the spikes when I was swinging, and that's an instant kill. Not sure if I mentioned this, but the action figure company NECA, NECA, however it's pronounced, they released a. It was a couple of years ago, a Simon Belmont action figure modeled after, you know, Castlevania 4 Simon Belmont, and it looks really cool. I meant to get it a couple of years ago, but I failed to pull the trigger on it. Now it's a quite a bit more expensive. I'll get around to getting it eventually. Whoa, lucky break there. I wouldn't believe it if I didn't capture it on my card, but I think that's the only time I've been knocked back over a gap onto a platform to safety. Normally, it's like you're a magnet for the pits when you take the knockback. Admittedly, I'm not very good at this part. I think there's like a bunch of secrets around here. You don't really have time to go for them though. There's a crucifix over there.
Okay, finally got my cross back. And this isn't so much a stage, more of a transition. much time to lollygag here. Ugh, stupid. I knew that was gonna happen. That's what you get for jumping blindly into a broken candle. Statues remind me of Saifa. Alright, that's the first half of the game. Now you are actually inside the castle. So we'll keep going. We're on a pretty good run so far. A couple of meaningless deaths. life. Thank you very much. Okay, holy water. I'll Gladly take that. The night's much easier in this than the other Castlevania. Castlevania 1.
You know what, even though I do prefer the crucifix, the um, holy water, triple shot holy water, I think the last time I did play this I used, because this, the boss of this area is the um, dancing ghosts, and I believe last time I played it, I made the same mistake, I got, I had to fight them with the holy water, triple shot holy water, and I remember it being a very easy fight. I know it's been remarked upon a million times, but the Ballroom Ghost, obviously a homage to the uh, Haunted Mansion's Haunted Ballroom scene. May have mentioned this in my other vid, but in fact, I'm almost certain I did. But there's a really interesting, if you're interested in, um, if you've ever been on Haunted Mansion or you've ever been interested in knowing how it works, there's a pretty good video. Uh, should have just thrown the holy water. It shows how the effect is done. It's called the ghost pepper technique. And it uses uh, mirrors. And it's pretty interesting. Mirrors and a projection. back when they really were the Imagineers. Now everything's just a crummy 3D virtual ride. Ugh. Should have used holy water. Totally my fault.
That's probably my biggest complaint with this game, is you get locked on the steps. There are a couple of areas where that is a big problem. Same mistake. Pretty bummed about not having holy water for the boss battle. Okay, so we got the triple shot X and the one up. That one up there is very generous because if you're, you know, you struggle on this part, on this boss battle, it's basically a chance to. Uh, they spawned right on top of me.
Closing in on 100,000 points. Always love hitting those big benchmarks. I believe up next is the library, which has my favorite theme in the game. Okay, finally got our crucifix back. This part, I'm, I'm over 100,000 points by the way, but this part I'll definitely admit that I'm not very good at. Thank you. Excellent. And we're not even going to bother with the candles because... I can't remember which ones have sub-weapons in them. Okay, there's a uh, health coming up. Excellent.
I know that knight is going to come back. Oh, I didn't know the bats came back too. Goodness. bother with him because we have full health and weapons. <laughs> Couldn't avoid all of them. All it takes is one. That's okay. With triple crucifix, this guy should be a snap. And that's why I love Triple Cross. Okay, so in my opinion, this is where the game gets hard. It's like stage eight, the dungeon. And admittedly, it's this is completely trial and error. Like you are going to die hundreds of times until you finally figure out how to play through this section. Oh, no, why'd I do that? It's not the end of the world. There's also holy water in this level, and it's very effective for 
the boss, which is Frankenstein. That run wasn't going so smoothly. The reason why we're going go out of our way to get the axe because we want it for that section where the head of pots is shooting fireballs at us. I'll point it out when we get there, but it's right near the end of this screen. Let's not make that careless jump again.
not seeing the pattern here. <laughs> it's useless, it doesn't stop them. There we go, that's a better pattern. Nope, no thank you. Oh, I wanted that. Oh, it was just the dagger? Ugh. I feel like such a fool. Okay, so I did get the crucifix back. And I bumped my head on the spikes. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. This game put the dagger in all the worst places on purpose.
Pretty ugly run through that level. I believe next is the treasure room. And this will probably be the last area we do. Best thing about this level, there is a ton of points. never been able to make it up there. I wish I could have though. Crucifix. Oh, well, I'll take it. The axe is actually very useful. If you can keep it all the way to the boss battle, which I know I'm not going to... Oh, I've never... I really wish I'd been able to foresee that. I've never been able to swing all the way across. I always get knocked down. So distracting, all those ghosts. <laughs> oh. I know a lot of retro gamers have remarked that this is their favorite level, but for me, those ghosts just ruin it. Okay, at least this way we'll get another crack at, uh... Trying to make that jump. First, let's see if we can... Okay. And it's gotta be the perfect jump and whip. Oh, there's another one there. I don't think I'm ever gonna get that. 
thought I was just gonna swing to the other side. And the run is pretty much falling apart. As expected at the treasure room. Goodness gracious. Look at that, I finally made it. Totally worth it. life to boot. All the good sub weapons are in spots that are really tough to get to.
ton of treasure in this area, if I recall correctly. You really rack up points in this section of the game. Right, looks like we're going to make it to the bat with double shot axe. This is going to be very helpful. Okay, so we've go we've been going for almost an hour and a half. We're over 200,000 points. We made it past the treasure room with all our continues. Now is a pretty good time to go ahead, wrap it up. But we did get to show off some cool stuff, fighting bosses with different weapons. Disappointed we didn't get to do the uh, ballroom ghosts with the holy water. That's a fun way to defeat them, but other than that, I'm satisfied with this run so far. So we're going to go ahead and stop it here. Maybe we'll pick it up again soon.